So Wednesday, uh, how does the time go so quickly, Bryce? It's Wednesday the 15th, isn't it? Um, yes. Halfway through December already. How's things going with you? Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, Catherine, well, interesting. It's such a pride. It's so say. interesting. Uh, Catherine has become like my sister over. I feel like we're we're sisters. So um, yes, it's and it's very uh, it's it's nice to have a soul family go through these uh, these uh, dark nights of the soul together. So it's been December has been very, very interesting. I know a lot of people are struggling this December, but, um, you know, I will say yesterday, the 14th was my grandmother's birthday who passed away back in October. And I know I've told this story before, but, um, before she passed away for a couple of years, she was dealing with Alzheimer's. And so I, I had not actually seen her because of all of the restrictions. Um, you guys know what we're talking about. And, um, the day that she passed away was October 23rd. And that whole day, my grandfather had passed away a few years before. And before this, this, she would kind of get confused about where my grandfather was and looking for him, not remembering that he was no longer there. But that whole morning that of the day she passed away, she kept telling the nurses that she was going to go see Ed today. My grandfather, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to see Ed today. And she was so excited. And the nurses were like, yeah, okay, okay. You know, someone has Alzheimer's. And then that night she passed away. Well, it turns out that October 23rd, I didn't know this. That was their wedding anniversary. So if that gives anybody any clarity of what love really is and like the, the truth of, 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 of who we really are as people, sometimes these obstacles that are placed in front of us, especially dealing with spiritual warfare seems so heavy, but at the end of the day, you know, love is the truth and it will, it will bind us all together. And so I do believe we do have people on the other side of the veil that are fighting for us and working for us. And so if anybody's feeling stressed out right now, just remember you are loved. Oh, such, such an important point. I mean, you know that I've had very difficult few weeks because one of my horses was very unwell and then had to make the difficult decision to let him go at the weekend. He was very old. He'd had a lot of issues. He'd, he was a rescue horse. He'd, he'd, um, he'd really had a hard life, but he was the most gentle, loving, soft soul. And I just keep looking out the window because I've let my other two out. To, they were around my office at the moment, which is adorable because they're really going through the grief cycle as well. And I think this is so, so important. I think one of the things we've been talking about and we wanted to talk about today is one about the love as well and just how important it is to hold on for that from whatever source it's coming. Because I feel so much love from him, you know, even though he's got his unicorn wings or and flying up high. Um, but also about balance, about bringing some balance into our lives because we, this has been such a a weird few years, couple of years for everyone. And, you know, we, we spoke about this, I think, a little bit before about how we've got this combination of telling people to do their own research or advising them to, because there's a lot of telling going on, which we don't like, but advising people to find out things for themselves, but equally just to get the balance right between um, living in the now and actually making sure you are living and enjoying every moment that we've got. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And there's this thing we talk about a lot within the yoga practice, because sometimes when you get too pie in the sky about stuff, um, you know, we are spiritual beings, and we're having a human experience. And we know that sometimes now it seems like the paranormal is actually more normal than the normal. But you're also in a human body. Exactly. And so we see this happen a lot, especially in the yoga world, where you get kind of like Vata deranged a little bit. That's the Vata the air, the cerebral where you get too caught up in the um, celestial and you lose your grounding on the earth. And, and part of that is regrounding yourself. And I know Catherine, we were talking about this last night. This is something I do all the time at 38 years old. I'm still doing this. I put my headphones on and I dance around my living room. And we were talking about this last night. I think I'm a Broadway star. I don't know. It's, it's, you know, just to do something, just to bring myself back to who I am as a person, like not who I was in the past, not who I'm going to be in the future, nothing like that, but who I am right now here in this life. And, and, and my, what I love to do outside of like the spiritual outside of the, just being back to me. And I think that, especially since we are in a, 
a major, major battle right now. And it's crazy because half the human population doesn't even realize that we're in a battle right now. And in the fact that we're all fighting in this battle and, and it's different than any other battle we've ever experienced. Sometimes you do have to take that step back and just live your life and just be you go, go dance, go hike, go do something that is not so focused on the intensity of what's going on. So that will better prepare you to come back to it later on. But yeah, don't forget to live. Like, you know, it's, it's, you know, you, you were put in this body for a reason and that's to live your life. Yeah. And, and this constant sort of need to know. So there's a lot of people that, you know, are very focused on, you know, we all love anyone watching this is very into their spiritual development and that is so important, but it's what we've been talking about a lot over the past week is we have got to remember that we have chosen to come into human bodies in this incarnation and therefore we are meant to be living as humans. Now, of course, we can learn lots from, you know, past lives, Akashic records, from connecting with whichever guides we've got, from lessons from the now and things like that. But, you know, we are meant to have fun and enjoy the process as well and actually enjoy being in this human body otherwise we wouldn't have chosen to come back from it and sometimes there's a reason why some of these memories we didn't bring them forward into this lifetime i agree 100 percent. and this actually came up um because i've talked to people about this before is, you know and i absolutely believe in past lives and i absolutely do believe that there's a lot of people that you share very close connection to because of your past existence and if that's the case you're going to feel that regardless of whether you remember or not, you're going to feel that. And, um, you know, with even with trauma therapy that I went through a while ago, you know, my therapist used to say when we would do the EMDR therapy, that it's not necessary for me to actually remember fully what happened to me in certain events. If that's not necessary, that there's a reason why the brain will block the memory. The body does remember, but the brain, the actual action of what happened to you, what's important as we is, is that we deal with the emotion that's associated. Cause that's the thought that's the, you know, actions are just actions. It's the emotion that shapes us and traumatizes us. And so I keep thinking about that just in trauma ther therapy, I've been through for this life. And so therefore it's like, when you look at like, and I find past lives very fascinating. It's yeah. whenever I hear about a past life, I just kind of take it in as interesting. Like that's interesting, mm -hmm. but that's not who I am now. That's not who I am now. Now I'm, I'm Bryce and I was born in 1983 and this is my life now. And I want to be here presently for this life. And, and any, everybody I've shared past existence, existence with will be a part of my life in this life too. But I want them to be who they are in this life. I don't need to go back and relive whatever it was in the past. That's already done. Let's move forward and see what happens yeah. in this life. And that's kind of, that's kind of how I've always kind of been about the whole situation with past lives. And, and, you know, and, and, um, in the spiritual world, we always talk about being in the now, being in the presence of now. And so how can you be in the now if you're too caught up on the past? Um, yeah. You know, and honestly, like I, I did, I tried to do a, a particular ceremony this weekend where I released some of my past lives, but I couldn't do it because it involves other people and there, it just was too, too difficult. But, you know, it, it's, it's, um, yeah, we, we need to, like, we have the holiday season coming up. And even though I know people are weird about Christmas now, because we know it's, it's origins are not that great. To, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. You can still make it great. Like go and be with your family, go decorate a Christmas tree, go make some cookies, like yes. live your life. Play. I'm so, I was wrapping presents last night. I can't wait to give my niece and nephew their hoverboards. I got them for Christmas. Like I know my sister's going to kill me because I got them hoverboards, but I can't, I'm so excited to like, I mean, I'm the cool aunt. I have to, I have to maintain my reputation of being the cool aunt. Absolutely. Like, I'm so excited to like have them. Like, I can't wait for them to unwrap their presents and like play. Like, that's living your life. To like shut the phone down that day, shut the computer down, and just be outside with them and like watch their faces. That's 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 the essence. When the time comes that we're all on our deathbed one day, what is it that you're gonna you're gonna cherish about your life? It's going to be those memories of, of the good times you had with people you loved from this point, from now. Yeah. And not good looking back and regret, because this is why I've always had a bit of a laugh about the astrology side of me. Now, again, I completely believe in past lives. I love having my Akashic records read. It's very interesting. 
Um, I love astrology. I find it fascinating. I love all these sort of things, but I don't let it rule my life. So I'm not going to use the fact that something's happening astrologically as an excuse, because even though absolutely I agree it will affect me, it will affect nature, it will affect the planet, it will affect the animals, I still have free will mm -hmm. to decide whether I'm going to let that retrograde ruin my day or not. Yeah. And this is the difference. You know, I've got a twin sister and we're incredibly different. And yes, I know astrologers being born 10 minutes apart can make all the difference, etc. And I accept that. But equally, we all have free will to um, choose, just like epigenetics, which I was, I'm absolutely fascinated with being a biologist. You know, when I was at uni, we were taught that the genetics was the be all and end all. And we now know, though, that's ridiculous. And you're really you so knowledgeable about the bloodlines and our bloodlines, our genetics, our past life, our astrological, they're all bits of the jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. that are put in that absolutely do shape us and make us the people we are and then encompassing all that we have our free will yeah to choose what we do with that I, yeah and i i agree 100 percent because you the makeup of who you are as an individual is so much more complicated than you actually realize you know if you do look at the astrological this moon the rising the moon everything then you've also got the blood types then you've also got your genetic disposition then you've also got your nature and nurture from your childhood that's going to also dictate how you respond to things then you've also got your doshas which is the ayurveda yeah. understand you are so you cannot put people in a box just because like i'm an aquarius and even though I do have a lot of the personality types of an Aquarius person, that's not all of who I am. I'm also Vata Pitta. I'm also O negative. I also have these two parents and these grandparents and this sibling. And I grew up that there's so much that makes you who you are that when you put people in a box as this is how they are because of this, it's actually kind of disrespectful in my opinion. Like people yeah. are so, are so individualized and, um, and yes, you do have. So the way I tell people, especially with the blood types and how it gives you personality traits you know that and now you decide what you do with that yeah you and that's how you do that yeah and yeah, it's a bit it, like all that I think that it still fits in so well to the journey we've all been going through over the last year and a half, two years, and some people for 50 years or longer, um, whatever your sort of discovery of what your truth is. Because again, even truth is completely subjective um, because you don't know a lot of the time whether it is, it might be your reality that you're living now, but we all know things can change in, the, in an instant. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what's so wonderful is this is fun this is all fun putting the more we understand ourselves the but almost the more choice we give ourselves because we can then the better you understand yourself you it gives you tools to help control perhaps reactions yeah. and things um so that's really wonderful and it's fun and it's enlightening and, and it's we really that important that people don't go into excuse mode you know yeah. because seen so many people go into excuse mode about well i didn't know about the side effects of this or i didn't know about that or i didn't know about this and that's fair enough no you didn't but it's what do you do once you do know once you have had that sort of aha moment what do you do with that information what action do you take and that's we call that pratyahara in yoga that's self-study which is the whole point and that's i was actually on david zubik's channel yesterday because we were reading through the yoga sutras and i keep telling him you know, with the practice of things like yoga, it's like, you know, you look at the spiritual warfare and people can say, oh, this is a, you're being influenced by demons, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And that might be true, but you have to be accountable to that. You know, yeah. if, you're, if you have a spell put on you or you've got some juju, some black magic juju, which is very real. Once mm -hmm. you become aware of that, you then have to take action. You then have to take action. You can't just be like, oh, okay, not you, whatever you. And so that's the pratyahara. That's the self study. And, um, I know I, I took action this weekend over something that was done to me. That was very scary. Um, because it really affected my health in a very literal way. And I worked on it and now I'm able to kind of counter that. I don't want to be in that, that box anymore of, of, of having this done to me. And, um, and you know, I, it, it, yeah, it's all about what the tools that you have when you know yourself and you know what's happening and having that understanding. And it comes to this, it comes to everything in life. And I'm sure, you know, as you as a parent, Catherine, I know parents say this, like you can have children that, that grow up in the same house, but you, t you talk to them differently because they have different yeah. reactions to things like you can't. Yeah. So, so, and, and then you have to do that to yourself as well. You have to be your own. My therapist used to say that you have to take care of that little girl now. 
you yeah. are now responsible for taking care of that little girl that was m- mistreated as a child. You have to be that person now to take care of you as yourself as a little girl. And, um, and I think sometimes we don't have that balance as we were talking about, we get caught in these like mind traps where we can't bring ourselves down and actually take a moment to sit back and like study ourselves. Um, and I, and it happens a lot in the spiritual world as well. I think, you know, Ram Dass used to, I mean, it's not just the yoga, it's all sorts of spiritual worlds. You go through these different, um, you go through different courses or you go through different years and different experiences. Like in Ashtanga, we go through different series and you think you start thinking that you've dealt with yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you think, Oh, I've conquered this. I fixed this now, but you know what happens? Then that spiritual practice comes around and walks you upside the head again to show you, have you really? Yeah. Have you really? And put it into the test. And this is why there's so many parallels with what we're seeing now, because you know, People are saying, well, why do I need to know this information? Well, if you know it and you shine the light on it, then you've got a chance to do something about it. And if you choose not to, then you need to live with the consequences of that until perhaps you get to a stage later on in your life where you might not to. And I think this is the same with everything we're discovering about ourselves through all these amazing tools and techniques that are available to us. But I think it is, you know, I hear so many people, I obviously work in natural health with people and their animals, and so many people have been told either certain breeds of dogs or horses are predisposed to this, and this one's in my family and that. And we now know that most of that is complete bullshit. We now know that actually your raw genetics are nowhere near as important as the environment um, influences, which are many and numerous. And that's the same with sort of us. All these things that we bring with us into this life absolutely are, but we've our current environment is what we do. And it's the choices we make on a daily basis. You know, yes, we're we're finding out a lot of what we think is truth. We don't, you know, let's see what we think in two years' time (laughs) about this um, and about at the moment. And it's what we do with that information. What how does that help us live our lives in a better way? How does it help us help others and contribute more and really make the most of this existence that we've chosen to come into this time? And sometimes this grief process for me, uh, you know, for example, you know, I probably knew this was coming with my horse, you know, it's been on and off really on the cards for the last year, doesn't necessarily make it any easier. But um, it does make you the one of the positive things about a situation like grief is it does make you reevaluate things. Yeah. And think, okay, like you said earlier, when you're on your deathbed, you know, we, we all we think we've got all the time in the world and we haven't. And then suddenly you lose a loved one of whatever species or something dramatic happens in your life. And you realize, bugger, I've wasted this time doing (laughs) things that weren't necessarily in in mine and their best interest. And it gives you a chance to sort of reset your compass, really. Yeah. And that's all that is. I mean, we call it course correction in in Ashtanga. It's like Mm -hmm. when you you kind of all of a sudden see these patterns, because we all have patterns. We all, all of us have patterns. And I love how you talked about consequences, because that's what karma is. And a lot of people get confused about what karma, all karma is, is action and reaction. That's all it is. And so you have to be able to accept certain consequences. If you make certain decisions in your life, it's everything, you know, the fact that I'm filming with you right now is, is now the consequence of that is that my dog's in the other room. You know, it's like, there's, it's all, it's everywhere. It's, it's every, it's like the butterfly effect. The butterfly wing goes in Africa and it affects something over in the United States. Like this is the reality of the matrix. And, but when it comes to like consequences too, and self-study, you know, one thing that I've really, and I am someone that is very prone to anxiety. I'm very, pr- I've been diagnosed with CPTSD. I do have a tendency to go into uh, catastrophe thinking, but one thing I have learned is this idea of like settling into things and being able to just observe them in myself. And I notice a lot of people, especially, you know, people who think that they've evolved spiritually immediately react off of emotion, immediately yeah. react off of what they're feeling. And sometimes you're feeling, I mean, I, it's, it's just, no one's, no one's going to be excluded from the, from the laws of karma, the laws of consequence. And, um, and, and in order for us to actually, like, I think find that balance is to be able to find the gift of settling into things and not reacting so quickly, being able to step back and observe and observe ourselves as well, being able to not just observe other people, but how we interact 
within ourselves and with other people. And um, I think I said it on the show last night. My grandfather used to say, like, there's nothing, you can't control anything in this world. You can't control your money. You can't control, you think you can. You have an illusion that you can control yeah. the stuff, but the only thing you can control is you, is what you are doing. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, and I think, you know, and I think a lot of, we're, we're, we're really at this, I know astro, if we're speaking of astrological, astrologically, we are at a very intense time right now. This is yeah, a, right. a lot of stuff is coming up. Um, I, if we want to get kind of loopy and spiritual, I believe that we're really at the end of this very crazy battle. And so the darkness is throwing in it can I probably can't say that word I'll have to mute that but <laughs> you know the darkness is going to come in basically I keep thinking about Miley Cyrus's song Wrecking Ball just this yes ball completely in. yeah and and that's and that's okay and if it happens and, and and if that happens in your life and and you know the truth you, you know what you're seeing and you stand in that you're gonna have to let certain people go you're gonna have to let the cards fall where they will the chips fall where they will and just trust that at the end of the day it's all going to be okay and everything is going to get righted anyway but um but yeah but then go back to that balance if you are experiencing that go outside go take a walk go take your dog out go play with your niece and nephew go play with your kids like you know, watch a funny movie that you like, you know, go, go listen to music and dance around, you know. Like I did last night in the dark. And <laughs> no, I love it. Thought, what's the thing? Yeah, my husband did say he's going to buy me a big cauldron so I can dance around that next time. <laughs> I love it. I, love I can it. do of that over Christmas. And also it's like, yeah, so so also choosing how we respond to all of this and, and choosing, it's such a cliche, but choosing to respond with love rather than with defensiveness and this is something that takes practice and you know it was one of the big advantages of getting older so I've always reacted really emotionally I'm a very emotional person so I've always reacted emotionally and you can always tell by my face what I'm Same. really Same. <laughs> yes um, and I don't want to hide it that's not me I don't want I'm not that I'm certainly not in danger of being one of these people that suppresses their emotions <laughs> no because <laughs> so, no, that's another that's another problem all in itself that's a different yeah problem. yeah yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, as you, you develop these skills through life, you can choose to respond with kindness and choose to see things from other people's perspectives in terms of, you know, the why are they, are they doing this from a point of calm, kindness or not? And, and this is really, really important to what we're facing at the moment because um, there's so much going on, rumor mongering about you know, what the real reason for this is, are they good, are they bad, what, even like, what are the reasons for the lockdowns, you know, and some people are saying it's to keep us safe whilst they do these operations, other people are saying that, we don't know at the moment, we don't know, we can, we can hopefully manifest it in the direction we want, but we, we don't know for sure. No. Yeah. But what we can do is choose how we're going to respond to all of these situations that are being thrown with us. And also, are we going to be in a, respond in a way that when we little old grannies looking back in our rocking chair and thinking, are you proud of yourself? Did you do the right thing? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I know there's there's a. Uh... Yeah, I, I know. I mean, I, and that's the thing too. Like we look at like the things about what's going on globally with, you know, for us, we can't really travel. We can't do a whole lot because we've rejected the demands of, of, of them. Um, and, and that's tough. And it does feel like your whole world is, is, is falling apart when you feel like you've lost that, that liberty to just be able to move about. And so when you talk about going within yourself to be able to sit calmly with that and to observe that. And yet we don't know, we, we, we know that, that we're going to win, but we also don't know at the same time. There's also that fear of insecurity of like, what if we are being duped? And I think a lot of us have that, that fear. Um, but I know for me, and, and I think, again, that's that part of like sitting back and reflecting at this point, up to this point, I, I'm pretty proud of the decisions that I've made um, mm -hmm. in this battle. And I, I'm pretty proud to say that I have somebody posted something on Twitter, and I'll have to be very careful about how, how I say this, that basically, if you are still without, mm -hmm. you still haven't given in, you literally have survived one of the biggest, um, you guys mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about, I don't want to say the word, of all time. Like, that's how strong you are. You survived mind control. You weren't mind controlled, but in saying that doesn't mean you're not going to be mind controlled in the future. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you haven't still got to really keep your wits about you and develop your intuition and keep questioning and seeing. And also, you know, just like, I mean, 
I know some people that are recovering alcoholics or recovering drug users or recovering things. But what is amazing is the way they've taken responsibility and they are recovered. And I think that goes to the same of what we're going in now. Anyone can have a, a, an awakening, a change of opinion, a realisation, a spiritual connection, whatever, at any time and think, OK, I don't think there's a single person that would be watching this that hasn't made decisions in their past that they then can regret. Right. Right, but sure. did you learn something from it? You know, have you learned that lesson or are you going to get the universe to keep chucking you more extreme versions of this situation until you do less? And I can laugh now because, you know, certainly with certain relationships, um, more with, um, you know, perhaps friends or, or work colleagues and things, I, I sometimes took a long bloody while to learn the lesson. <laughs> Yeah, same. Mine with more extreme things thrown at me. Same, and the same. Was like, oh my god! So you know, have a bit of laugh with yourself as well. If you're taking a while to learn the lesson, yes, same. Anna, I didn't realize like what I was until I went through trauma therapy that I was like, oh, that's what's happening. And I will say, like, I typically, I'm actually really proud of myself um, because of something that's happened recently. I'm actually really proud of myself because typically. I'm the type of person, no, I haven't, obviously with what's going on globally, I've stood my ground because it's really important. But when it comes to like interpersonal relationships with friends, typically I'm pretty easygoing and laid back and I want everyone to be happy, but I'm proud of myself because this weekend I stood up for myself. I stood up for, for, for what I'm feeling in a certain situation. And I, I feel very powerful in doing that, that, that I, and I, bro I feel like I broke a pattern. Like I personally broke a pattern within myself to stand up for for myself, even in a small group environment. And I've never done that before. I've never done, hence why I've been in very bad relationships in the past, but yes. I've never done that before, you know, and to be able to say, no, 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 this is, this is, this is my, this is what I'm seeing. I'm not going to be persuaded. I'm not going to be gaslit. This is, this is what I'm seeing. And I'm proud of myself for that. And so even, even recognizing those power, those, those patterns that you have and some patterns we have are healthy. You do. I, I have a healthy pattern with getting up early and, and doing my practice. That's a healthy pattern. You know, some of us have good patterns, but those bad patterns that have, have kind of led us into more karmic uh, experiences that aren't necessarily beneficial that we need to kind of move through to be able to be humble enough. There's a humility there to be able to see where you still need to do the work. And, yeah. um, and I think that happens a lot too, though. I, like I said, but going back to the whole yoga thing with, with what we, we see happening a lot in these deep spiritual traditions is that, in the beginning, you go through all these, these uh, obstacles, you go through all these things and you, you overcome them, but then you lose your humility. You start to lose your humility. And when that happens, the universe is going to smack you across that face and be like, remain humble, remain grounded, step back and observe the situation from a, from a more grounded perspective. And it's common. This, ha this happens a lot, but that's the thing about life. Like we're always constantly learning. It's constantly a cycle of learning. So yeah. And I, I've seen that happen so many times with healers, with really good healers of all different modalities, where um, they get to a stage sometimes, some people, where their ego then kicks in too much, mm -hmm. and then the universe always brings them back down again. Yeah. And it's a really effective lesson, and we're all doing it. But I'm still, I'm really pleased I'm still learning a lot of my lessons, because once I've stopped learning them, then that's probably the end of this game over. existence and game over, and I'm really enjoying myself at the moment so I think also embracing the fact that you're still learning lessons is equally so important because no one wants a perfect Peter in their life do they that no. would be really annoying <laughs> no absolutely you know it's so funny so we have in the practice of yoga that I do we have these six different series and they're all very challenging it can take up to five years just to work through one series and one of my teachers used to say my original teachers before so used to say um you know people who struggle in primary series they're the lucky ones because their karma came up early and I've, I've held on to that what he said I, I have always held on to that and it's true because you know, people, you know, I, I, when I go to India, I see these people who are struggling in the primary series and I'm like, they're actually the coolest people off the mat. Like they're so humble. They're funny. They have this wisdom and it's the ones that had to get to like the really advanced series before their, their ass got whipped. Those are really cocky, egotistical people that I don't actually want to be around. They might have a pretty good practice, but they suck as a person, you know? And so, and so you kind of see that, that inner, that, that, uh, inner, inner, uh, 
use of your own obstacles and you know and, and they're not bad like my teacher used to always get really excited i'm in the mice room when these young girls would come in who were flexible and fit he didn't really care he's like okay next posture whatever but when like a 60 year old man would come in that was overweight and tight he would get so excited because he would be like okay now we have something to work with and so these obstacles these lessons they're not some that again taught me a new perspective they're not something that you should be upset about or try to deflect or project it's something for you to work with there's juice there there's information there so no matter what happens no matter if you messed up in a situation or you took the bad advice or you got duped or fooled or whatever don't don't look at that as something necessarily bad that happened to you go back settle in and say okay where's the juice in this where's yeah. the friction in this what do i what can i learn from this and that's that's, but I think people's egos again, get so big and they can't, they can't humble themselves to be able to sit back and realize that's all that is, is it's just a learning experience. And that's why it's so lovely to have friends who are on the same wavelength going through this journey with you. And yes, we're all going through our own unique journeys, but the sign of a really good friend is the person that's just going to tell you straight away when your yep. ego is getting out of control. And you hear all sorts of famous people say that, you know, most of them, it's like their school friends, the people they've known the longest or the people that they haven't met when they're at the height of their fame, that what they can trust to actually give them the real, you know, the real honest opinion. And oh. that's so important to have people like that in your life that are prepared to have those difficult conversations with you. And they're all coming from places of love. When people yeah. that are in your life are having a hard conversation with you, it's because they're concerned. You know, they're concerned about you and they, they, they want you to be safe. They want you to not make a bad decision that, that they can see. You know, sometimes when we get so caught into something, especially emotionally, we have a really hard time seeing clearly. Um, you see this a lot with narcissists, with narcissistic ABUSE, with their victims, you know, you look at this idea of like, uh, which is interesting because that's basically the playbook that we're seeing in globally as well as the same, mm -hmm. same, same type of behavior, you know, but they will, you know, like a narcissist will like target someone and they're going to try to get their narc supply from that person. Now, the reason why they're doing that is because the narcissist does not have a sense of self. They don't have a sense of self. And so they're going to try to mirror someone to, to get that sense of self from that person. And so that becomes their targeted victim. Now, what they do originally with that targeted victim is that they do love bombing and mm -hmm. love bombing from a narcissist is because I've, I've experienced it. it. It can put you in a place of ecstasy. You think you have found like your soulmate, your, your other half. You think you have found like your best friend. You think everything is complete, but in that, that's all an illusion. And they're pulling from you validation. They're pulling from you from validation. And so when that fog happens, you start to come into the state, state of mind where you're not thinking clearly, where there's no, where you're, you're fog. And the fog does stand for fear, obligation, guilt. Um, and then all of a sudden, the narcissist will pull you off of that platform and start to degrade you and start mm -hmm. to a b u s e u mentally emotionally physically and so then you the victim are constantly trying to get back to that place where you were where they were putting you on a pedestal but it's never going to happen and um and so a lot of times when we're in situations like that and this happens a lot this is very common and it's happening globally as well and i, I know for us who have been kind of aware of what's happening globally we've been trying to tell our friends like step back, look at everything clearly and see the obvious. But when you're yeah. in that state of mind control, when you're in that fog, you can't see things clearly. I cannot say it. And a really important point, I think, just from what you've just said then, I think, I think again, it's realizing that everyone's got a bit of narcissist in them. Mm -hmm. So you see it all the time. You've seen, I've seen it a lot this, this last year and a half with just the YouTube audience, for example. So they've had people that we've seen, they do this to sports stars and celebrities. And that by they, I mean society people. Yeah. Um, and again, you never get this in the animal world. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. So people love people and they love them when they're on the way up. And then when they seem to reach a certain degree of fame or fortune or whatever it might be or success, then you start to see them being knocked back down again. And it seems to be something in the human psyche that almost that yes 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 i want to be a nice person i want to help this i want to hero worship them i want to do this but only to a certain point and then when they start getting a little bit out too unachievable then very quickly oh my god how quickly does that turn exactly and I know, situation. 
I know, I, I, I know what you, I mean, I know we've talked about this off camera as well. Like I too, like, I don't feel like, you know, for me having a platform, I don't feel any different than before I had a platform. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel, and I do get people sending me really sweet, awesome emails. And it actually, it kind of like makes me uncomfortable sometimes because I'm like, I hope you don't think I'm someone I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just a human being. I'm just like you guys. I'm just trying to figure this out. You know, I want to be, my goal is to always be a kind person. I, I know like, you know, you, you never remember what people say to you, but you always remember the way they make you feel. And Absolutely. I always want people to feel like they're comfortable with me. Like I, I really want people to feel, I never want people to be afraid of me or be intimidated by me. I always want people to feel comfortable. And honestly, and I know Captain, we've talked about this, all the friends that I've made on YouTube, the, like with you specifically you too, like, I don't, if YouTube were to go away tomorrow, you would still be my friend. Exactly. Exactly. My, my, my love for you is not just about the, the platform that it means the platform means nothing compared to like, I care about you as a person, as a friend. And so, and, and I think, you know, and there are some people you film with where it is just kind of that business type of relationship, but then there are other people that, that you genuinely connect with. And that's what I want. And that's the reason why I started yeah. my channel was to connect with people, you know, and I think it is really important. And, and this is, we're coming, we, we got ourselves into such a mess by idolizing other people. Exactly. That's, you can't, you know, you can respect, I respect researchers, I respect people, but we've talked about this before. It's also okay to follow a truther or follow someone on this platform and not agree with absolutely everything they say, but still respect them. That's I think it's essential to not agree most with everything they say, because you're not gonna, uh, you're not going to evolve in any shape or form if you're doing that. Yes, you, you know, your core values are likely to be very, very similar mm -hmm. and aligned, but you're always going to have different ways of looking at things. You know, you, you're both looking at my phone. I, you're looking at the back end. I'm looking at the front. But we're both looking at my phone. Right. I think it's so, it's really interesting. You know, if you've, if you've got, um, over in the UK, there used to be, there was, before this happened, really big dog show, different issue to this, called Crufts. And it's like a beauty contest for dogs. Yeah. Now, whoever wins Crufts, whichever dog wins Crufts, the other dogs don't treat them any differently. No. It doesn't make any difference. The other dogs aren't jealous. They might be a bit jealous if they're getting a few more treats when they're yeah. getting their rosette, but then there's no, they do not treat that dog any differently. If you've got a top show jumping horse, the other horses in the stable don't sort of bow down and think, oh, you're so important. You better get your food thing. They're, they're, it's, the dynamics are exactly the same. And it is really interesting. That's why I really hope that you know, we've all said this is where we've got into a lot of these problems because we believe we've relied on people to be our saviors. We've expected other people, whether it's the medical profession, teachers, religious people to sort out our problems and be our gurus. And of course, we can always learn from people. I mean, I've got loads of people I'm looking forward to listening to over the weekend because I love them and I find them inspiring and they lift me up and I always do learn. But they're not my gurus. You yeah. know, not yeah. they're not. I'm not going to sit there and sort of hero, hero worship them and make a little altar for them, sort of. No, thing. and that's funny. I, you know, going my teacher in India, um, we we would call, you know, we called them gurus as master teachers, and, and it, it drives me crazy in India because even before all this happened, like before I was even on YouTube, and I would go back and forth, I would get so annoyed by these other people like lionizing him, and I'm like, he's just a man. He's just a master teacher of yoga. Like he's just, and, and, and they would ask him these questions and conferences that were absolutely ridiculous in my opinion, because you're coming from a place of being a Westerner and you're asking advice from someone who is from India. You have a totally different life culture. Your culture is different. So why are you, why are you handing that power over to this person that is, is just strictly here to teach you yoga? You know, yeah. that, that I, I used to drive me crazy. Now, the good thing is my teacher in India was always really good about kind of not taking the bait um and, and there were funny questions like and I, I, one conference i was sitting there and somebody asked a question it's like a 40 year old person asking this question does coconut stand outside of the shala that you can get after you drink after you practice and the question they asked our teacher like how many how many coconuts should we be drinking after practice and my teacher was like as many as you want like why are we so, why are we giving our power away like that? And it was the most ridiculous. Somebody asked him like, oh, you know, if you live in a part of the world that has four different seasons, because we want the shallow room to be quite warm, like, how do you then, how do you then work in the winter? And my teacher was like, 
you turn your thermostat on. Like what? I, this yes. Is, and, and, and it's like, why are we, why are you asking these questions? Like he's here to, for you to ask questions about the Bhagavad Gita or a certain posture or a certain philosophy. Why are you, why are you lionizing a human being this much? You have your own brain. You have your own gut intuition. You have your own feelings. Like, why do you have to ask these, these questions that you can figure out by yourself? And I think that is another part of this great awakening and, and any other YouTubers out there like us that have big egos, like, that's not okay. Like I, I try to tell my channel a lot. Like I feel like all of my subscribers are on the platform with me. Like I'm Absolutely. not my face, but you're here with me. Like we're doing this together. Like I don't want to do this by myself. We're doing this together. You know, yeah, so just having these conversations and not needing to know any of the answers. That's the biggest thing that I've enjoyed about all of this. I love the fact that I'm not on the white hand team and I don't need to have any of the answers. I am so relieved. Now, having been a past control freak. Because I'm wanting to have all the answers. It's just the best feeling ever. I don't need to have anything. Uh, I'm enjoying asking the questions, but yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't no, need to have any of the answers. It's so funny you say it. When, when my, and listen, guys, this was like in the early 90s. So I'm sure that there is a different psycholo psychology, psychological view on this now. But I remember my mother used to always tell the story that my fourth grade teacher, so what, you're like eight, nine, 10, something like that in the fourth grade, told my mother once that my sister and I, there are two types of thinkers in this world. You can really break it down to two types of thinkers. Um, there are people who think black and white, and there are people who think gray. And she, this fourth grade teacher told my mom, my sister thinks black and white. I think gray. And she said, you know, my sister, Mary Becca, she was like, she does, she needs an answer. She, she likes math. She likes science. She wants a direct answer. She wants to work with solid information. Rice doesn't need an answer that's why she's really good at reading comprehension skills. That's why she's really, you know, and, and she was right. Cause as I got older through school, I loved philosophy. Mm. I loved reading. I loved talking about human experiences. I, she was right. I, I, I had some, I come from the Bryce's. My mother's maiden name is Bryce. It's where I get my name from. They're very well-known doctors in the Southeast, especially in South Carolina. I come from a long family of doctors. And when I was in high school, my chemistry teacher I kept asking all these questions. Like, I know I was annoying him because I just don't, like, that's just not my wheelhouse, but I was trying to figure it out. And in the middle, he just like looked at me and he goes, why are you asking these questions? You come from a medical family. How do you not understand this? You know? And I was like, well, you know, it's, uh, this is just not how I think. This is not, you know, this is not, this is not, this is not what I enjoy, you know, but, but talking about not having the answers, like, yeah, I enjoy that. I like seeing where things are going to go and seeing like, well, we don't really need it. Everything is shades of gray in life. Everything is shades of gray. And there is no direct answer to everything. And yeah, and I'm, I'm really glad I'm not on the White Hats team too, because I could not handle what they're going through. No, I really couldn't. It's bad enough making decisions for certain things in your life without having to make decisions for the planet. <laughs> I know. I know. I was saying, so I, I can't even. I'm my role in this life. Yeah. I'm hard enough trying to do the time trying to control my dog on a leash. Like, I could never be in their position. Like, that's not something that I will sit on. I will just continue doing deep dives because, like, that's not, that's not like, yeah, that's not, that's not for me in this life. So, so yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, and just again, you know, that comes on to embracing people's differences. There's so many people that are really good at stepping into that role and can do it more objectively. Yeah. Um, and, and we've all got different skills in this life that we've got. So it's really important that we sort of use and embrace those and not try and be someone we're not either, which is really quite yeah, why would you want to try to be someone you're not? Of us a lot, hasn't it though? Yeah, I mean, like what you said it before, like on a sports team, everybody's got their own uh their own yeah. roles and it, it, you can't all be a particular person. So why are you trying to emulate someone else? Like be yourself. You've got your own abilities. The same creator that made the Rocky mountains made you. So why are you trying to be someone else? Be Good yourself. Point. You're perfect. Yeah. You, you're That's enough. Fine. You're enough. The same creator that made the rock. I'm going to say that again. The same creator who made the Rocky mountains, who made the Sahara desert made you. That's how powerful you are. That's how special you are. That's how unique you are. Don't try to emulate anybody else. Don't lionize anybody else. Because you are you. You are made for, for a reason and you have skills. You have abilities. You know, they, they want to tell us we have 97% junk DNA. I call bullshit on that. 
Oh, it's just ridiculous. And it's laughable, really. I mean, it is completely laughable, as is we would. And particularly when you see the amount of genes we've got in relation to a flea, I yeah. think they've got more than us. So, you know, it is a bit ridiculous. Um, but look how high a flea can jump for its body size. I mean, we'd all be jumping to the moon if we were fleas, yeah. not of a flea. So everything, every skill has its place. You know, I was reading up about ticks the other day because I get asked a lot about natural parasite protection, obviously, for animals. And we all know that the chemical ones are very toxic. And when you read about the life cycle of a tick, it's quite incredible. A tick can go two years sitting on a blade of grass with no food, waiting for a host animal to come on that can jump. When you look at it like that, and I feel quite sorry for the poor tick. Oh, I'm that's patient. Pinch it off and chuck it into my neighbour's garden. Sorry, Sue. <laughs> I once did that with a snake. We had an, we've only got one poisonous snake in the UK and it's not deadly normally unless you're a cat or a tiny child. Even then you might not be if you've got the antidote quickly. And one of my beloved cats came in carrying this huge great adder, but instead of catching it by the head to stop it um, uh, biting him, he had it in the middle. So the snake could have turned around and got him at any time and that would not have been good news for a cat. So I just oh panicked. Gosh. I just grabbed this snake by the head and chucked it into my neighbor's garden because I had to get it away from my cat. Otherwise, he was going to get bitten. Yeah. So then I then had to quickly run around to my neighbor and say, you might want to get the kids in from the garden. I've just <laughs> chucked a huge adder into your garden. And she had two little dollars. But they were fine, everyone. Don't panic. But you might not want to live next door to me. <laughs> the snake was all right as well before anyone asked. It was all right. It did get away. I saw it. But we, anyway, you got a lot. We have so many poisons of snakes down here in Georgia. As a kid, we had to learn like black on yellow can kill a fellow, red on black, you better. So we had to like learn all these rhymes as kids. Yes. We so many copperheads, rattles, there's so many poisonous snakes down here. But you know what's interesting as you were saying that with the animal kingdom, and I, you know, I've I've been doing these deep dives into voodoo on my channel because I grew up around voodoo. Like in the deep south, we have a lot of that. And you know, as we're discovering um all the lies we've been told. I want to look deeper into all these different faiths to see like, what the truth is. And it's interesting, um, when I was looking at the Haitian Revolution as part of the Haitian voodoo of New Orleans, um, they talked a lot about how in the, the faith of voodoo, which is like a science-based based faith where you're working with nature, that the reason why they could do ceremonies in the swamps, in the bayous where there's alligators, is because they learned how to work with nature and so when you yeah. have these like alligators or these poisonous snakes if you knew how to respect each other and how to respect the animal they wouldn't bother you they wouldn't yeah. bother you and that's so you know we talk about like animals not lionizing other animals and it's the same thing with with nature like they're so animals regardless of what species they're so ingrained with the rhythm of of the earth that they're able to kind of only attack when they need to humans exactly. attack because they're insecure humans attack we we're the ones that screw it all up you know oh, so, always absolutely yeah. always you know it is funny um but really bit of good advice from there just always go into the swamp with someone that can run less quickly than you and then you can't <laughs> don't worry about anything <laughs> choose one of your friends that can't run yeah. Sometimes at night to like chill out, this is going to make me sound like a psychopath, but sometimes at night to chill out, I'll watch, watch like two true crime. <laughs> That's like how yeah. I relax. Um, but there's a really great se series about the bayou in New Orleans. Y'all would be shocked at how many people get dumped in that bayou because the body just disappears. It just, it'll just, yes. it'll, just it'll just get, it'll be food. You know, it's just, it'll just disappear. So, so if you live, if you're visiting New Orleans or Louisiana, just keep your eyes out. My neighbours have got these two amazing pigs. They're gorgeous and they're huge. And I used to help look after them when they are younger, when they went away and everything. And then once I discovered that pigs can eat human remains, like now every time my husband doesn't clean up his dishes or his clothes, I'm like, you know where the pigs are. I know where the pigs are. You know where the pigs are. So you want to be careful. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. But unfortunately, the pigs are a little bit too well fed, I think. I think we'd be a bit tough for them now, really. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, and that's the thing about animals, too. They typically don't overeat, do they? Animals will typically uh, only eat what they need, uh, especially my dog, who's a rescue. He's really good about, like, not eating um, unless he's really hungry. He hasn't exactly. been. You know, it's <laughs> He so knows, like, when he goes outside, like, if he has, like, a little upset stomach, like, he, and I actually learned that from you, because when I, he first started doing this, it really, like, made me paranoid, mm -hmm. but he knows, he'll sniff around with grass, and he knows, yeah. like, which plants to eat to make him throw up, and when his stomach, when he's got an upset stomach, he'll self-medicate, 
And I've heard you say stuff like that. Like that's, we should keep it that way. They know what they're doing, you know? We do. And they can, you know, I can remember when it was four years ago today that Lola, one of my remaining dogs, started her journey, her long journey over from Romania. I just, that's one good thing about Facebook. You get the pop up memories because I'm hopeless with dates. I sort of have no concept of time whatsoever. So I'm completely hopeless with dates and what year anything happened in. Um, but it was really amazing. When she first got here, she was just so adorable and she was so grateful for anything to eat. So she'd eat cabbage, she did carrot. But I remember one day I did an experiment lock up, lock, not long after I got her and I gave her one organic carrot and one non-organic carrot and she wouldn't touch the non-organic because she could sense the chemicals on it. Um, wow. But now she's a bit more pampered. She's a bit more fussy about what she'll eat. But she's, yeah, she's, it, it's it, the natural instincts. And one of my ponies lived wild for four years before I got him. And he's one of the best ones when I used to do the in person courses to demonstrate with because he knows exactly what he can eat and what he can't. And interesting, my son was always born with the same thing. Even as a toddler, he knew exactly which plants he could eat and which he didn't. I, I mean, mean, that's so amazing. It like, is amazing. Kind of, we, we, my dog was the same way with water. Um, when we first got him, uh, when he came back from India as a rescue, uh, of course, I've got purified water here. And so I I put that in his dog bowl. But, you know, we're, I'm literally right in the middle of, of Atlanta. And I think any city is like that. City water is questionable anyway. But we I'd take him down to the park and they would have a dog bowl set out at the park for dogs. And, of course, it's really hot in the summertime here. He wouldn't touch that water. Yeah. He wouldn't touch it. No matter how hot he was, he would not touch that water. And I was like, that's got to tell you something. Yeah, absolutely. Completely. Just a bit, bit of bacteria and all of it. So I oh, just love these discussions, Bryce. I really yeah. do. It's fascinating. Um, so many more questions. I think if anyone's watching um, this, which hopefully someone will, if you've got questions, interesting questions that you'd like discussions on, please do tell us because I just think – at the time it is now, it's really nice to release the pressure off people, not have to know what date things are going to happen on, whether we're right or wrong about this, concentrate on making the decisions that you feel are right for yourself. And if you're a parent and you've got children that still listen to you for your children <laughs> um, and just let go of the rest, let go of the things that you can't control. Yeah, there's a really famous quote that I really love, and I will end it with this for you guys, because I always remind myself of this. In the end, everything is okay. If it's not okay, mm -hmm. it's not the end. And so just breathe and let things be, because if it's not okay, it's not the end. Love it. Thank you so much. I so enjoy that. We will be speaking again soon. I think we will be seeing um, speaking again with a couple of other people on Friday, I think it is. Yes. I'll be coming from you guys at my parents' house. So oh, cool. I'll have a different background. So yeah, maybe my mom will step in. She's very Southern. <laughs> so. That's why I haven't got the dogs in here with me today because I'm a rid of a reptile. shouldn't say that now, should I? <laughs> But I'm always cold, so I've always got my fire going, and my dogs hate it when it's too hot. So when I'm sitting here and I have to have the door shut, they're like, no, Mum, we're not coming in with you. We'll stay in the lounge. So thanks so much, everyone. So lovely to see you, and we will speak again soon. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>